All right. For your final photo in your photo sets, what do you need to do? You need to Photoshop your photo. I'm gonna go through some techniques with you that we've touched on a little bit in your uh, third exercise, 003, when we were Photoshopping the frog and or the turtle. And I'm just gonna add some Photoshop technique to that tool set. So I'm in Bridge right now. These are my photo set 003 photos change and I'm going to go through sort of these are the ones that I selected for working photos these are the ones that I feel comfortable working on um, that that are worth sort of spending some time so here is my photo in Photoshop and I'm going to do a couple things just right off the bat so background is locked that's great Command J is going to give me an exact copy of my background layer. I'm going to retitle it working and I'm going to turn the eyeball off of background. We do that again just to save that original file just in case. We're going to go to first to brightness up here in the adjustment layers. We're going to increase that contrast. And that's going to add this adjustment layer there. Go back to your JPEG and work with the levels. So the levels go from black to white and there's a gray in between. If you look at this histogram and you don't have a lot of data or information in white, go ahead and slide that little guy over. And you should really see some significant change in your photograph. And in my case, really lightened it up so that you can see some of that detail. I do want to push the black back just a little bit because in photography, we are interested sort of in the richness of these blacks. That's good. Uh, let's go to curves. Remember RGB for red, blue, and green. And we're just going to adjust these a little bit. We want to increase the amount of data again that we're allowing into that photograph. So we're going to go through them red, green, and you'll find that the blue is sort of what brings it back into a normal white balance. So if you're seeing overly red or overly green, hang in there until you go through the third uh, curve setting, which is your blue. That's where you should start to see good whites again. I'm going to skip exposure. Vibrance, you know, this is on your quiz and we talked about it a little bit before. Vibrance is the amount of light that's in there and the saturation is the amount of color. So this is really gonna determine the difference in tone in your photograph, right? If you slide that all the way over, it gets very stylized is what we call it. Uh, the word I was gonna use is ridiculous, but I, you could possibly use this in some cases. So I'll, I, will, I will forego the word ridiculous. It's very, very stylized. Likewise, if you desaturate, Again, we've got almost a wild, wild west sepia tone here. So I really don't mess with those too much, assuming that I'm more or less happy with the exposure that I got um, in the field, which I am. I like these rusts. I have a cool little yellow right there and some rust right there. And I'm gonna fly that back in. Hue and saturation. Um, hue, again, is the actual color that we're working with. Um, it's the pigment itself. So if I shift the hue, I'm going to shift again the tone of the color. Hue is a little, it's a little touchy in Photoshop because hue has less to do with light than it does uh, the actual physical pigmentation. So it's here and we appreciate that, but it's, it's sort of a misnomer or a misleading indication inside the software. It's fine. We use it all over the place. It just means color. To that end, the amount of color that we have, again, we're back in this saturation question. Do we want it saturated or desaturated? That's really up to you as the artist. Fly it back in. Uh, the filters we did talk about a little bit. This is a warming, <clears throat> warming filter. I told you that I'm really into this underwater filter. 
but literally since I told you that, I changed my mind. I think I'm really into cyan these days. The density will affect how much filter you have on top of your photo. If you can't tell the difference, get ridiculous, right? We have this background photo saved. It's not like you're gonna wreck your photograph. We're also working in adjustment layers, which can be turned on and off. So if I'm like, oh my God, that filter is hideous, I'm just gonna turn it off, all right? Again, I'm a little bit more of the fan of the subtlety. I'll fly that back in. Guess what? I'm happy. So I'm gonna select all of these adjustment layers, including my working photograph layer. Shift click so that they're all selected together. I want you to control click, which is right click on a PC, and I want you to merge those. It's gonna change the name of your layer, change it back to working so you know what you're doing, okay? I want you to do um, something else here, which is create a gradient. So your gradient tool is over here in the left. Uh, you also have one here in the right. I want you to grab this one on the right hand set of tools and pull this flyaway out. I want you to change your gradient to black and white. So make sure that the colors are not listed here. Just go to the basics, make sure that's open, black and white, make sure it's a gradient. And then I want you to try a couple different things. The first thing I want you to try is multiply. So we're in the blending modes here. The default is normal. That's not gonna work um, because we can't see through it. So what we're doing is blending these as though they were traditional negatives or slides. First, we're gonna try multiply, which is the same thing as holding, taking two slides and holding them up to the light. Think about the uh, Kodachrome slides that you may have found somewhere in somebody's basement. If you're a big time thrift shopper, sometimes you can find those, they're cool to look at. This is like holding two of those to the light at once, which is why it, it's dark, but you can still see. The way that we can adjust that is by reducing that opacity. So what it does is just adds a little bit of drama. It's sort of cool, huh? I like that. I think I'm gonna just keep it. And again, I'm gonna join these. I wanna reduce the number of layers that I have there on the right-hand side. I'm gonna change this back to working. And I'm gonna double, I'm gonna duplicate this again. So remember that quick key, make sure your layer is selected, hit Command J. And with the working copy layer selected, I want you to go to filter, other, and something called high pass. Set your high pass filter to about 4.9. Mine just defaults there. You're gonna slide yours up and down. This is sort of what it looks like at a huge radius. And this is what it looks like at a very small radius. We want to slide it. We're looking for these details. See this 50% gray? We want these details to come through. What we're going to try and do is increase uh, the contrast of the details that you picked up in your photograph. So go ahead and set that. For me, it's almost always been right around 4, 3.7, 3.8, 4, you know, 4.2, something like that. Then we're going to do the same thing. Go ahead and click OK. We're going to do the same thing. You've got this working copy selected. Take the blending style menu, drop that down to soft light. And what you should see is a dramatic increase in the details of your photograph. You can drop that opacity. And if you have questions about how far you've gone in your photo, go ahead and turn that background on and then turn your details on. All right, so this to me would be a pretty good final photo. I'm happy, but I wanna show you one more set of tools that you may or may not be familiar with. So over here on the left-hand side, we've got something called a dodge tool. And if you open up that little drawer, you can see burn and sponge. Let's, let's work with the dodge tool just a little bit here first. Make sure that you're working on this copy. Let's go ahead and just merge these so that we're not getting confused. Rename. 
I've got the dodge tool out. The dodge tool operates like a brush. So you want to access those bracket keys on your keyboard. Left bracket will make it small. Right bracket will make it large. Um, go ahead and make it large enough. Check up here and check to make sure that you are addressing the shadows and that your exposure is somewhere around 30%. What we're doing uh, has to do with the light. So pick somewhere and start clicking. You can really uh, make dramatic changes very quickly with this technique, which is why I want you to make sure that exposure is just, it's low in the 30th percentile so that we're not making huge sort of garish drags all over the place. And then just start to sharpen some of this stuff up. And when you're dodging, what you're dodging is light. And what that means is that you are reducing the exposure. It's counterintuitive, like a lot of things sort of in photography. Remember that we're working in opposites and inverse in a lot of mathematics. So when you dodge things, they're gonna get lighter, okay? So you're dodging the light. Um, I might like to see that detail a little bit more. Maybe a little bit there, maybe a little bit there, maybe a little bit there. And I think I'm happy. Where do I need to burn? So burning is the next thing that we do. It's got this little, looks like a hand. Um, I wanna make sure that that exposure is still set somewhere in the 30th percentile. I'm gonna go ahead and change the range to the mid-tones. And then I wanna burn this uh, white piece. It looks like a rag maybe. Someone's been adjusting their motor with a rag. Can you see that, that difference? Burning means you're allowing more light, which is gonna darken your object. But the other thing that burning does is increases the contrast. So for something that's white like that, I don't want a huge piece of white sticking out uh, in the middle of my composition. So I wanna push these back just a little bit. So a little bit along the edge of that pipe, maybe some up there. But mostly I'm sort of interested in this. We can drop this and work on the shadows. Nice. I'm really into that when it starts to, to sort of look like a separate piece that's almost like on top of the rest of the photograph. I really like that. Um, again, this is, this is all subjective. How do you know when it's done? When you like it. You are the, or, you are the artist. When your eye is happy, your piece is finished, okay? So we'll give you creative concepts feedback and technical feedback, but really you have to be brave enough to tell us when your piece is finished. One last thing I wanna show you that applies to color work is a sponge tool. This changes the saturation. Again, we're talking about that saturation just in areas. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use it because I've got this really cool rust. I want to make sure that the mode is set to saturate and that the flow, you know, the flow could be down probably around 60 is fine, but I want to saturate some of these uh, rust spots. I actually do want to bring in a little bit more saturation there just to increase the color a little bit, increase the interest on some of these details that I picked up in the field. Maybe this sort of darker blue down here. And for the most part, I think I'm happy. I think I want, yeah, nice. Just hit that uh, gold piece there. And maybe try to pull some of these greens up. Again, it's a very, it's a delicate hand. Remember that you're working with uh, the equivalent of light within the software, it's sort of touchy to remember sometimes. But I'll tell you what, um, I'm gonna turn that off and I'm gonna turn it back on. I'm happy, okay? So I'm gonna get rid of my background. I don't need it. I'm gonna save my final photo. Last name. First name underscore ph003 final remember i said i was working on my third photo set i just happened to blast through a whole bunch of them today but i wanted to make sure that you have this uh example 
before you start working on your stuff, okay? So I'm saving it to PH003, and I'm gonna save it into my final folder. Ooh, I already have one titled that. I'm gonna give this another name, final D. Save maximum quality, and I'm ready to turn it in, okay? Get to work, have fun.